Hello again guys and welcome to another video. We've got something extremely important to discuss today. Uh, it's no secret that uh, the FX Impact has kind of been the center of this entire channel for the past year or so. Um, and there's some really good reasons for that. Basically this gun has just given me everything I've needed in a PCP air gun and it's allowed me to do things that I've never been able to do before. Um, and there's various reasons for that. It's got a lot of uh, features that really suit the kind of shooting that I like to do, but it all boils down to the extreme accuracy of this gun. Um, and that accuracy is something that you've got to kind of work to achieve. Uh, not that the gun isn't accurate when you buy it, but uh, you've got to fine tune it when you get the gun. And that is because this gun is made to be used over a variety of calibers. And because of that, the, the power setting is not always optimized for a specific caliber. So I'm gonna show you today how to get the best out of your impact um, for any specific caliber. And there's no secret formula for this, but I'm gonna give you the basic guidelines of what you need to do uh, and, and why you need to do it in order to uh, fine tune your accuracy with your impact. And this will apply to the FX Crown as well, but I wanted to focus on the impact specifically uh, because it's only gonna be a very short amount of time before I get the crown in my hands. I think they start in production fairly soon. And when that happens, you're not gonna see that much of this gun anymore. You might see it quite a bit, but not as much as the crown. So I wanna get this done now because I know in a few months, I'm gonna forget about this topic and not gonna actually approach it. Okay, let's start off with the most basic thing, uh, most basic tip I can give you. And that is clean the barrel when you get the gun. Um, now I know it sounds kind of silly because I've said so many times that the smooth twist barrels and smooth twist X barrels don't need to be cleaned. Um, and that, that's true, but that applies to uh, lead fouling in the barrel. The barrels are very smooth and so lead doesn't get stuck in the barrel. You, it kind of pushes, cleans itself out with every shot. But straight from the factory, the barrel does have some uh, bore cleaning paste in it from the original uh, barrel polishing process when they make the barrels um, and from the initial manufacturing process there might be some residue from the factory um, I don't know why they don't clean it out in the in the factory I, I would actually like to see them do that but that's not the point the point is when you get the gun you need to give it a good clean clean all that stuff out start with a clean barrel and you will see accuracy actually improving as you put more shots through it and as the barrel reaches its, its lead equilibrium. Next thing to talk about would be reading the instruction manual from start to finish. And this is less to do with uh, the actual tuning process and more to do with just saving yourself the grief of messing up the gun. Um, there are kind of parameters that you've got to stick to when adjusting the power on the gun. If you exceed those parameters or if you do it the wrong way, you're gonna break your gun, and then you're gonna go complaining that the gun's of bad quality, when in fact, it's just uh, a mistake that you've made in the tuning process. And now we get to the really, really important stuff, and that is getting the power setting right for the caliber and pellet you intend to shoot with most. Now say for the caliber and pellet you intend to shoot with most, because it is impossible to get one power setting that works with all calibers extremely well. Yes, you can kind of have a universal regulator setting that will shoot numerous calibers fairly well, but in order to get the, the best accuracy out of a specific caliber, you need to tune it for that caliber specifically, and that's what I've done. I haven't bothered with the multiple calibers thing. I've got one barrel in this gun, and I'm, I've tuned it to work extremely, extremely well. Um, I've got the 22 caliber on the impact, and I can't give you a magic formula to what works because every gun is different. I know this because I've tried with multiple impacts and they're all slightly different. Um, but basic guidelines that will help you figure out how to adjust the power correctly, I would say, I would say start with getting the right muzzle velocity or knowing what the, the most accurate muzzle velocity is. And for Diablo shaped pellets, this is generally between 800, 850, 900 feet per second in that range. What happens if you go too fast 
is that the, the, the uh, center of pressure actually shifts on the pellet as it gets into the transonic zone, which is like Mach 0.8 up, uh, Mach 0.8 to Mach 1.2, that's about 900 feet per second up. Uh, the center of pressure starts to shift and you get weird turbulence around the skirt of the pellet, which just starts, it gets it oscillating and downrange, it will start to spiral completely out of control. So you have to keep a check on the muzzle velocity. What happens if you go too low is that your trajectory just becomes really loopy, um, the pellet will become affected by wind, and even if there's a very slight breeze, you're not going to get the accuracy that you want out of the gun. So there's a sweet spot, and you have to stick within that sweet spot. So the big question is, how do you, you know, what's the best settings within that sweet spot, you know, because there's a number of things you could do to get that 900 feet per second or 860 feet per second. Um, you could, for example, put the regulator pressure up to 150 bar and turn the hammer spring all the way down. So you get a short, a short burst of air uh, that kind of spits the pellet, accelerates it very quickly and then lets it do its own thing out the end of the barrel. Or you can turn the reg pressure down to let's say 120 bar or 100 bar and get a slower, longer burst of air that accelerates the pellet all the way to the end of the barrel. So there's many ways to do this. And the reason I can't give you a magic formula for this um, is because every barrel is ever so slightly different and the harmonics of your gun might be slightly different. Now, at this point, I'm gonna direct you to another video I've done, uh, actually two other videos. The first one called The Balance of Power and PCP Efficiency, which will talk about that acceleration of the pellet through the barrel and how it differs with different pressures and different hammer spring tensions and different weight hammers and all of that. You need to look at that before you start the tuning process. It'll help you understand it better. So I'll put a link down below. And the second video is my video on, on harmonics because that's also something that you need to know before you get down to business. And for those of you who have been upset about the fact that I've been doing some Centify Rifle stuff on this channel recently, if it wasn't for the Centify Rifle stuff, I would not have learnt the stuff about air guns. I've learnt a lot about Centify Rifles from air guns, and I've learnt a lot about air guns from Centify Rifles. So all of that's a good thing. Don't complain. <laughs> um, but in terms of the harmonic tuning of the, of the barrel, basically, in a nutshell, if you haven't seen that other video, uh, every barrel vibrates a little bit when you take a shot. Before the pellet exits the barrel, it starts to vibrate from the hammer hitting the valve. Um, if the pellet exits the barrel, when that harmonic wave is at its worst at the end of the barrel, then you're not going to get the accuracy that you want. But if the pellet exits the barrel when the harmonic wave is far from the barrel, in other words, it's gone to the end and bounced back a bit, then your accuracy is going to tighten up. I did an optimal charge weight test with my rifle, with my 260 Remington the other day, and this, although it's not an air gun, this will demonstrate that point extremely well. Uh, let me get this on camera here. I don't know if that's perfectly focused, but what you'll see here is that at specific charge weights, the accuracy is way better than at, you know, this charge weight over here. This one's got more powder, this one's got less powder. That's harmonic tuning of the barrel. That's getting the bullet to leave the barrel at a point where the barrel is, is still. Um, and that's what you have to do in your impact as well to get extreme accuracy. Um, and the only way you can do this is to try out different power settings. So what I would do, this is my personal uh, advice to you, is I would put a number of targets down range on a non-windy day, um, preferably at longer range, because often close range doesn't tell you a lot. You can have a bit of a pellet wobble at close range and your groups can still be tight, but, if that, but that wobble will translate to bad groups down range. So I would say at least 50 meters, put up, put up some, some targets and take 10 shot groups and then adjust the, the regulator pressure a little bit up. I'd say start at 100 bar, adjust the regulator pressure a little bit up every single time, shoot more groups, and then see how the groups open and close. And that's basically harmonically tuning your rifle to, to be the most accurate it can possibly be. Um, once you've found a regulator pressure that works, work around that. Then you can start adjusting the hammer spring tensioner to where you want it. And I would actually leave the 
valve travel adjustment well alone, where is it now? Over here, right over there. I would leave that well alone unless, unless you wanna really fine tune stuff after you've done the hammer spring thing, but um, I've actually never used it. I've been pretty content to just do regulator pressure and hammer spring tension. I've actually got two pellets working really well out of this particular gun and particular barrel. Um, I've got the 18 grain JSP pellets shooting extremely well on power one at just over 900 feet per second. And um, this is a smooth twist X barrel. It's actually a prototype. Uh, it's not a perfected barrel. It's just one that I kind of grabbed from the factory when I was there with permission, obviously from FX um, to do some testing with. I think it's an one in 18.5 twist, which is a faster twist than the smooth twist but a slower twist than like a typical Lotha Waltha or BSA or CZ barrel. This is kind of a good middle ground, 18.5 to 21 uh, twist rate, because it will keep the, the pellet fairly rigid straight out the barrel for the first 25 meters or so. So it'll get really tight 25 meter groups, but it also allows the pellet to kind of follow its trajectory down range uh, a faster twist barrel doesn't allow the pellet to do that and so you get uh, you get a bit of wobbling down range when the pellet wants to follow its own trajectory and but it can't because the axis is too rigid so i've found that this is a pretty good twist rate um, and it also allows me to shoot these jsb jumbo monster diablos the new design 25.4 grain pellets um, it shoots these pretty well actually very well at 50 meters and under, like even better than the 18 grain pellets. Um, but before you go out and get these, I do want to say that I have noticed a bit of instability past 50 meters. In other words, when the pellet's on its way down, um, it, it tends to kind of lose stability a bit. That's got to do with the weight distribution of in the pellet. The weight's quite far back. A faster twist rate's not going to really help with that, unfortunately. I've, I've tried everything. So before you go out and buy it, let me do a a little bit more testing with different barrels to see if I can get them shooting better at long range um, and I'll let you know so don't go out maybe buy maybe buy one or two tins for now and and try it out but don't go out and buy in bulk until you've heard a little bit more from me um, one or two more things to mention uh, and that is you need to fit a good scope and a good bipod if you want to get the best accuracy out of your impact you can't put a rubbish scope on a on an incredible gun like this and expect it to shoot well. I've got an SWFA scope on here. There's a new scope called the Aztec, uh, which I actually helped to work on, which I'm hoping to review soon, another really good scope. Um, and then the bipod, I've got an Atlas bipod on here. There are one or two other bipods that can attach to the little Picatinny rail, but the Atlas is a really good one that I would obviously suggest. And then last thing to mention, when you get your impact, it's a good idea to just get a lot of spare O-rings for all the internal seals. Um, that's not just an impact thing. Every single air gun I've owned has had some kind of problem with leaks at some point or another. That goes for my air arms guns. I've had a caliber gun cricket leaking. I've had caliber gun calibri leaking. I've had a day state Wolverine leaking. It just happens. And it's, it's actually more likely to happen on the impact simply because the impact has so many O-rings in it. This is like a Formula One car that needs to go in for a pit stop quite regularly. I'm happy to, to go through that process because what it gives me is, in my opinion, totally worth it. But if you don't have the O-rings to replace these, then you're going to have a problem. So I would suggest just getting, finding out what O-rings you need, going to a place that makes them, getting a bunch of O-rings in. And that's it, guys. That's my guide to getting the best out of your uh, FX Impact. I hope to... Uh, do a lot more with this gun, with these pellets, with this barrel uh, in the coming weeks. I have been very busy, that's why you haven't seen much air gun hunting stuff. I've been kind of wanting to nail down my equipment setup for the year before I go out and in, in the busy hunting season, which is the winter over here, kind of June, July time. That's when I'm going to smash the hunting side of things. So stay tuned, hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching.